Welcome to everyone um, to this morning's briefing session. It's good to see such a great turn up. My name's Darren Billsborough. I'm here in my capacity today, I guess, as, the direct, as a, a director of the Green Building Council of Australia. Um, before I get going, I'd just like to, to, to uh, acknowledge um, the land that we meet on today as the traditional lands of the Ghana people and that we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. We also acknowledge the Ghana people as the custodians of the Adelaide region and their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Ghana people today. The, the format that we have today is we've got a number of, of addresses um, that are going to be made by uh, an excellent selection of speakers um, and they are then, after each of their very brief um, uh, addresses to you or presentations, we will then have a facilitated panel session and I'll take some questions from the audience. Uh, we're going to do that in a, in, a, um, in a manner in which you can send your questions via an SMS number. Um, and that number I'll actually just put up there. So 0431 131 156. You can actually poke that into your phones now if you like. Um, I'll mention it a few more times during the course of the morning, but um, if you send your questions through to that particular number, then I'll, I'll have a look at those and, and eventually address those to the panel. Okay, so this morning, what are we talking about? Briefing session on environmental upgrade finance. Um, I've been involved in the green building industry for quite some time, um, right from its original inception in Australia and in fact uh, went to the US to get uh, qualifications with the U US Green Building Council back in the early noughties. Um, and one of the things that, that I think all green building councils and, and in fact everyone um, struggles with is the existing building stock. Now the Green Building Council itself have a, a new tool that will be released during 2013 which is about looking at existing buildings. Um, it'll be the, uh, the existing building performance rating tool. Um, but of course a, a significant component of, of that rating tool and any rating tool, or anyone's p building, is energy. Um, and energy efficiency, energy performance has been looked at over a number of years. There's been all sorts of schemes, all sorts of issues. Um, but one of the things, and, and, and there's been difficulty, I guess, in, in, in finding ways to overcome some of the barriers that exist, whether that be in uh, getting a reasonable pay paybacks for the sorts of initiatives that one might, might want to put into their buildings, um, or whether it's overcoming things like the split incentive, which you're going to hear uh, quite a lot about this morning. And that is what excites me about uh, environmental upgrade finance, is that I think that all of our stars are aligning in relation to energy efficiency going forward. Um, not only is energy becoming more expensive, therefore one might argue that, that the paybacks are coming down and therefore um, there's going to be more impetus to, to actually introduce those initiatives, but um, environmental upgrade finance actually helps us with some of these other barriers. So on that um, basis, what I'll do is I'll introduce our, our first speaker this morning. Um, Nicole Holsley, Holsey. Nicole is a director of URPS, an Adelaide-based urban and regional planning consultancy. Nicole combines her qualifications in anthropology, politics and planning with a broad range of professional experience relating to natural resources management, climate change planning, strategic and policy planning, infrastructure planning, social policy, stakeholder community engagement and evaluation. Nicole's here today to speak on behalf of the Premier's Climate Change Council. Uh, the Premier's Pl Climate Change Council is established under South Australia's Climate Change, South Australia's Climate Change and Greenhouse Emissions Reduction Act. The primary role of the Council is to provide advice to the South Australian Government, specifically the Minister for Sustainability and Climate Change in relation to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and adapting to the impacts of climate change. The Council is chaired by Bruce Carter and consists of 10 members representing business, government and environment sectors. Earlier this year the Council provided Minister Kaka with a series of um, recommendations regarding environmental upgrade finance in South Australia. Consequently, the Council has been invited to set the scene for today's discussion. Bruce Carter, the chair of the, the Premier's Climate Change Council, was originally scheduled to be here today, but unfortunately he's not able to attend, um, so he's asked Noel to uh, Nicole to attend in his place. So if you can please join with me in welcoming Nicole. Thanks, Darren. 
Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here today to speak on behalf of the Premier's Climate Change Council. And can I too firstly um, pass on Bruce's sincere apologies for not being able um, to be here to speak today as originally planned. Today represents a significant milestone in advancing the conversation around the environmental upgrade finance in South Australia, as this is the first open forum that has been held on the topic. A fantastic panel of Australia's leading experts has been gathered from around the country, so I commend everyone here for attending. For some of you, this may be the first exposure to the financing mechanism that has been pioneered in Victoria and New South Wales, whereas others of you may have been involved in some of the initial discussions and therefore may be quite familiar with the mechanism and how it works. I've been asked to set the scene for today's discussion, so I'll briefly summarise the journey that we've been, in, been on from the Premier's Climate Change Council perspective. The environmental upgrade finance mechanism being pioneered in Victoria and New South Wales was first brought to the Council's attention by Nathan Payne, Executive Director of the South Australian Division on the Property Council of um, Australia. This was during a roundtable discussion that the Council hosted with leaders of the property sector regarding what else South Australia could do to facilitate lower carbon and more climate resilient buildings. Buildings account for over a fifth of South Australia's greenhouse gas emissions and consequently this me mechanism procured the Council's interest. Consequently, the Council investigated the mechanism in detail over several months before finalising advice to Minister Kaika recommending that the South Australian Government work with the local government sector to develop the business model and business case for establishing environmental upgrade finance in South Australia. As part of this advice, the Council highlighted the tremendous opportunity that environmental upgrade finance offers to simultaneously facilitate low-cost carbon abatement in the building sector, to stimulate economic development in the form of capital investment in upgrading buildings, as well as jobs and manufacturing opportunities for the building upgrade industry, to protect building owners and tenants from rising energy costs, all whilst providing a win-win-win arrangement for building owners, tenants, financiers and governments. This all led us to recommending that the case for establishing it in South Australia be examined in more detail. The Minister tabled a response to our advice in Parliament in September. This response accepted our recommendation and committed government to working with key stakeholders to develop the business model and the business case. In formulating the response, the Department for Environment, Water and Natural Resources led a consultation process with peak bodies and other key stake, uh, peak stakeholders from the property, finance and local government sectors, which confirmed broad support for pursuing this mechanism and reaffirmed the need for a collaborative approach. JUNA, with assistance from the Adelaide City Council and the Property Council, also commissioned a study into the scale and location of the building retrofitting opportunity in South Australia. ARAP undertook this work and estimated up to $666 million worth of capital investment in upgrading buildings in the CBD in fringe areas alone. This compares to a similar study in Melbourne which identified up to $1.7 billion of investment in upgrading commercial office buildings within the City of Melbourne and another study which identified around $1 billion worth of potential investment in cost effective solar photovoltaics on industrial roofs in the eight council areas covering the western half of Melbourne. The Property Council has also brought environmental upgrade finance to the attention of the Adelaide City Council and consequently Adelaide City Council has endorsed a proposal for its administration to work with the State Government to develop the business case for the environmental upgrade finance within the CBD. I understand at the pre that at present a number of State Government agencies led by JUNA have partnered with the Adelaide City Council and the Local Government Association to co-fund a consultancy to develop the business model and business case for environmental upgrade finance in South Australia. I am advised that this work will be occurring over the next few months and that key, sta key stakeholders from the property and finance sectors will be engaged as part of this process. This is an important piece of work and I commend all involved on the coordination and collaborative approach being taken to develop the business model and the business case. Establishing this mechanism in South Australia will require various decisions to be taken by state and local governments and therefore I encourage, but encourage everyone here to contribute to the discussion today so that decision makers can understand not only the opportunities but the challenges of establish, establishing environmental upgrade finance in South Australia. 
This is a very exciting event to be involved with, so congratulations to the event organisers, the presenters and to everyone that is here today. I've no doubt that the ensuing presentations and discussion will be stimulating and inspiring and I tr trust you will enjoy it. Thank you.